So in September of this year, the Brazilian National Museum burned down. The country's president called this, the losses, quote, incalculable to Brazil. As the media explained, millions of artifacts related to indigenous groups in the Americas were lost. Tens and thousands of specimens of plants, insects, and animals, a collection twice as large as the British Museum, gone. Lost forever are irreplaceable 19th century gifts from West African kings to the Portuguese monarchy. Gone are African textiles, wood carvings, bronze sculptures, and other relics of the slave trade. Truly, this was a loss to all of humanity. Even the building itself was a heritage site. It was the former palace for the Portuguese monarchy, who was forced to relocate to Brazil in the midst of the Napoleonic Wars. This national monument was built with the labor of enslaved Africans and their descendants. My project is called Slavery Images. Our mission is to digitize, share, and preserve historical images and world heritage sites depicting the African slave trade and slave life in the early African diaspora. At present, the images repository contains over 1,200 paintings, sketches, and photographs related to the Atlantic Saharan, Mediterranean, and Indian Ocean slave trades. We not only aim to expand that collection, but also develop 3D educational environments of endangered world heritage sites related to the African diaspora. For 400 years, the African diaspora involved millions of people globally. The lasting effects of this forced migration meant a conglomeration of African cultures fused into the social fabric of almost every single nation around the world. However, this history is more often than not neglected due to racism, stereotypes, and misunderstandings about Africa and the diversity of people involved in diaspora. Through the support of CU Boulder and in partnership with UNESCO and Trimble Incorporated, we are redeveloping slavery images. We have also been consulting with the Boulder Valley School District to develop K through 12 curriculums surrounding the history of racism and sexism to address questions students have about the Me Too and Black Lives Matter movements. What we often forget is that the vast majority of enslaved people in the history of the world have always been women. With costs dropping for virtual or augmented reality experiences, such as Google Cardboard, 3D educational environments will become accessible and affordable for student teachers and the general public with access to the internet and smartphones. We will also develop the website according to the most recent accessibility guidelines for the visually and hearing impaired. This video illustrates the process involved in scanning slave houses on plantations in Virginia, Mississippi, the US Virgin Islands, and a replica slave ship used in Hollywood. This project has come together through a necessity to sustain valuable digital humanities projects. Last January, I took over slavery images from its original creator, Jerome Handler, who is a retired professor in his 90s. Without younger generations of scholars willing to carry on legacy websites, many of our online resources will disappear due to ever-evolving technological advancements. Having arrived to see you in the fall of 2016, my colleague, Peter Wood, introduced me to local K-12 teachers in Boulder. With the help of nonprofits and corporations such as Trimble, this group was shaping the history of racism curriculum. As a professor of African history, I began consulting on their project, but quickly learned that Trimble had been scanning world heritage sites related to the slave trade. Through those meetings, it became apparent that Trimble's philanthropic efforts lacked a sustainable platform to showcase and make accessible the data for research and education. With CU's Office of Research Computing, our phase one goals involve building the platform with a relaunch date for this December. We also plan to offer open access to all data at its, from its rawest form to various lightweight der derivatives. This initiative alone will inform a series of recommendations to expand campus infrastructure to host more digital projects across all departments and disciplines. Phase two will not only involve maintaining and expanding this educational tool, 
but also to collect more 3D data from UNESCO World Heritage Sites, especially those found in Africa, Latin America, and the Caribbean. CU is currently negotiating the foundation of a Trimble Technology Lab, where we can leverage their in-kind contributions to train faculty and students to scan more places and objects, even beyond the scope of this project. As you might imagine, website costs and international expeditions are quite expensive and logistically difficult to implement. UNESCO's involvement was eagerly welcomed because they will be instrumental in securing foreign permissions to use scanners, drones, and rovers while abroad. To realize our many goals, this project needs more help from implementation and data collection through sustainability beyond my lifetime. We are actively expanding our partnerships with local and national museums, and of course, other institutions, granting agencies, foundations, corporations, and private donors. We of course have high aspirations because I firmly believe education based on reputable information acts as the most powerful weapon to combat racial prejudice and gender discrimination. As I wrap up here, I want you to imagine if the entire Brazilian museum had been scanned before the fire. What if anyone from anywhere around the world could access and study those millions of artifacts for free? Now consider how much of our architectural heritage is already at risk due to climate change, warfare, and human stupidity. This project has the potential to record our world heritage sites, address racism and gender discrimination, and inform the world about Africa's place in our global history. Thank you very much.